is paper technology? Talk to each other really quickly and decide it's paper technology. Technology is something that helps solve a problem, and paper helps solve a lot of problems. Thumbs up if you agree that paper is a technology. Excellent. Now, green engineers do something really specific in that they design technologies that minimize this environmental impact. We want to look at paper and think, well, we need to figure out what its environmental impact is. So what resources are used to make paper? Talk to each other. What resources are used to make paper? So pa I mean, the paper is made out of trees and trees are made out of roses. Raise your hand if your group said tree. All right. Environmental engineers and green engineers, they're going to look at all the resources needed to use paper and then decide, are there any environmental impacts? We're going to get there. During the process of making paper. But have, raise your hand if you've ever thought, hmm, I wonder if when they make paper, it impacts the environment. Has anyone thought that before? Oh, yeah. You have? <laughs> Raise your hand if you thought of it now. Oh, Yay, yes, I'm so glad you yes. thought of it. So what you guys are going to do um, is I wanted to show you your paper use. So about 8,333 sheets is one tree. So if we want to start thinking of paper as a resource, think about 8,333 sheets is one tree. Whoa. All right? On average, in your class, your, you, each student uses about six pieces of paper a day. Whoa. So if one tree is 8,333 as a class, in just your one class, in this one school, in this one city, in this one country, you're likely going to use about three whole trees a year. Okay? Talk about your thoughts on that. I can't believe I actually used three trees. Constance, I haven't heard you today. Talk to me about what your group just discussed. Um, we discussed that Charlotte said that she was guilty. She felt guilty? She felt guilty. I said that we should probably reduce the paper that we used. And before we like saw how much the school used, when we was talking about how much our class used, Charlotte was thinking we can use a half a paper and just write a little bit smaller. So do you think the only environmental impact is happening with the trees? Yeah. Or do you think that there might be other environmental impact happening? When might be more. But you also need a machine because you can't just have the wood from the tree and right. that wouldn't exactly be paper. You need a machine to turn it into right. paper. So each group is going to get a set of cards, two cards per table, so you'll kind of work half and half. And there are all the steps of the life cycle from raw material all the way back to raw material here. They're labeled, they're numbered. You can just cl clearly put them out. You'll have about 10 minutes to really look through the life cycle of paper and decide as teams or groups where in this life cycle you can reduce, reuse, and recycle. So please, which side are you working on? Where could you reduce? Um, let's see here. One place. We'll start Max. Start with just one of the places where you felt we could reduce. Well, me, Naeem and I discussed that we could reduce by people buying paper and using it because if maybe people stop buying paper, then peop then other people re will realize that that people aren't buy using it anymore and they cut down the amount of paper that, of trees they cut down and- Supply and, and demand. Supply and demand, exactly. <laughs> and um, it will help the environment because less trees will get cut down. Um, somebody else with a reuse. Uh, Anna. Um, for step six, because people buy the paper and use it, and okay. you could reuse the paper yeah. instead of just putting it straight in the trash. Yeah. I'm going to quickly, before we close out the lesson, hand you 
uh, the order, and you'll see the arrows of where recycle goes to, and also if you don't recycle, what step you have to go to. So take a look as one group at these. If you throw it in a landfill, it'll go all the way back to your trunk. <laughs> so, in lesson two, we look specifically at the life cycle of paper. We were appalled by the number of trees we were using each year, but you really did think like green engineers. Matthew, sit appropriately, please. We really did think like green engineers and think, where could we reduce? Where could we reuse? Where could we recycle? And my question to you is, why is this even important if we're talking about solar ovens? I'm so glad you asked. So in our next lesson, we're going to start thinking about making our solar oven, but like paper, our solar ovens are made with resources. We need to be able with those resources to build our own solar oven. And like those in the field in Botswana that are being used, we have to access resources to make, and we need to know what are the life cycles of those resources. We're going to need to ask the same questions. The resources we use for our solar ovens, does this material help solve the problem? If so, does it have an environmental impact? And then you're going to be asked, is it worth it? So you were looking at your paper use and you immediately thought like green engineers. And in lesson three, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the materials that you're going to have access to, those resources you're going to have access to to build your solar ovens. And you're going to have to decide, do they work for this purpose? But what is their environmental impact? So that's the end of lesson two. And we'll hit lesson three tomorrow. Then there's a scientific component, that second lesson that allows kids to collect data, learn about a scientific concept and so that they can apply it. Because we always tell them that engineers use their scientific knowledge as part of the process, but sometimes they don't have that scientific knowledge. So it allows that real in for a classroom teacher to get dig deeper at a specific scientific content. <laughs>